In this video we're going to look at data classes which were introduced to Python in version 3.7 and we're going to refactor a simple example to use a data class. So I want to dive in. Before we do, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page listed just below the video and thank you to everyone that's contributed to this. It's greatly appreciated. And what I'm going to do is add this video to a Python standard library playlist that I'm creating on YouTube. So at the moment we have videos on the walrus operator, structural pattern matching, enums, and I also just did a video on concurrent.futures and I'll leave a link to this playlist just below the video. So what exactly are data classes? This is a module in the Python standard library that provides a decorator and functions for automatically adding generated special methods such as the dunder init and dunder repr methods to user defined classes. So you can see in the example below we import that data class decorator and we have a class here called inventory item that we decorate using that class decorator. And then we can define our fields on the class like this. We have the name of the field and the data type as well. So some type hinting here. And as normal on a class, we can define methods as well, such as this total cost method. Now, one of the main things that data classes are nice for is the fact that they add this dunder init method. So that's automatically added and it saves us from having to write all of this boilerplate code. So instead of that, we just define the fields declaratively on the class. And the data class also provides a dunder repr method as well for the string representation of the object. So data classes can save you time by preventing you having to write those methods and saving some boilerplate code. And we're going to take a look at an example just now. So we have this book class here in Python and it's got the dunder init method and the book takes the title and the author as well as the number of pages. So we set these instance variables using self.title and so on. And then we have the dunder repr method as well that gives a string representation of the object. And we can see that below we have the book printed out to the terminal. So what I want to do is just refactor this to use data classes. So from the data classes module, let's import that data class decorator that we saw. So we're importing that just now and we're going to turn this book into a data class. We do that just by using the decorator. So I'm going to comment out this dunder init method. We don't need that at the moment. And instead we're going to declare the fields and their data types here. So the title is going to be a string. The author will also be a string. And finally, the number of pages here, that's going to be an integer. And we can also comment the dunder repr method out. We don't need that either. And at the bottom, I'm going to rerun demo.py and you can see we get the same output representation. So by using the data class, we can cut down on this boilerplate code and it automatically adds the dunder init and the dunder repr. So we've got no boilerplate here and we can safely just remove all of this. Before we do, I'll point out that this is especially useful if you have fields coming in in the dunder init method or data coming in and you're just setting the instance variables based on that data. You can just get rid of that and replace it with the data class. So I'm going to do that just now and we can get rid of the dunder repr. So that's a lot simpler, it's a lot more readable and it's a lot more declarative. Now let's take this further and see a few other features of the data classes module. We can actually define default values for some of these fields. So for example, for pages, we can set that default to zero. And if we remove that from the instantiation of the book, so I'm going to remove this number here. When we print this out at the bottom, we can see that pages has that default value of zero. Now if we execute this without a default value, let's go back to the terminal and I'm going to rerun demo.py, you can see we get an error. The dunder init method is missing one argument. So let's bring back that default just now. Now I want to talk a little bit about mutability. In other words, can the fields on this class be changed? And of course the answer to that is yes by default. So we have a book here, and if we then set the number of pages to 500 and print this out, let's go back to the terminal and clear that out and rerun demo.py, and you can see that we have updated the number of pages to 500. Now we can actually make data classes immutable, and what we need to do here is pass a parameter into this decorator. And that's the frozen parameter, so we're going to pass that in and set that to true. And if we go back to the terminal, let's clear this out and rerun demo.py, this time we get an error. So we have a frozen instance error, we cannot assign to that field pages. So if you need your data class to be immutable, it's very easy to do that. We just add the frozen argument to the decorator. Now what if you don't want something to appear in the string representation of the data class? What I'm going to do at the top is import this field object. And let's say we have some book library website, but we only make the book accessible to people that have the secret code. So this is a bit of a contrived example, but I'm going to add a field here called secret code. And let's make that of type string. And we can set a default here of secret. Now we're going to use the field object in a second. I'm going to remove this frozen declaration at the top. And let's go back to the bottom and we're going to clear the terminal and we'll rerun demo.py. And we can see this time that the secret code does appear in the output. 
Now we can change that by using this field that we've imported. So instead of setting the default like this, we can set that to a field and then pass a default parameter and that's going to set that default there. And importantly, what we can also pass is wrapper and we can set that to false if we don't want this to appear in the string representation of the object. So now if we go back to the terminal and rerun demo.py, you can see that that field does not appear in this. So that's now hidden. And there's one last thing I want to show and that's the default factory argument that you can pass to the field. So let's go back to the Python documentation for the field function. And we can dig into this in more detail. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments and we can do a further video. Here we can see we have a data class called C and it has a field called myList. And that's of type list of integer. And we use the field function here and we define a default factory as the list function in Python. Now, if we look at the parameters to field, you can see default factory here. And we also have default above that. Now, if the default is provided, that's going to be the default value for the field. Whereas the default factory, if that's provided, it must be a zero argument callable. And that's going to be called when a default value is needed for that field. And when might that be useful? It can be useful to specify fields that have mutable default values, for example, list, and also for dynamic values. Now, let's see an example just now. If we go back to our class here, we're going to add a field at the top here called ID. And that's going to be a string, but what I want to set that to is I set it to a field instance. And I want to pass a default factory into that. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a function. Remember, it has to be a zero argument function. So we're going to create a lambda function here. And what we're going to return is a string version of an object from the UUID module. So we're going to call the UUID4 function here. And we're going to convert that result to a string. And at the top here, I'm going to import that module. And again, this is from the Python standard library. What this means is that when a default value is needed for the ID, it's going to call this lambda function here, which is going to generate a dynamic UUID. Let's go to the bottom here and we're going to run python demo.py. And you can see we get this error, a non-default argument title follows a default argument. So this highlights an error that I wanted to show. You need to have this in the right order. So fields that have default values, such as the ID, they should follow all the values that have not got defaults. So I'm going to put this right at the bottom here underneath the secret code. And let's go and clear the terminal and we're going to try and run this again. And this time you can see we have the book printed to the terminal and it contains this ID here. And if we rerun this again, you can see a different ID is printed to the terminal. Now what I'm going to do just to finish the video is to pass an ID in. So if we go to this definition of the book and we pass in an ID of 1234 as a string, Let's go back to the terminal and we're going to execute this and you can see that it does use the value that we provided. So this is a default factory that is only run if it needs to actually generate that default. And in the cases that it does, it's going to return a string version of a UUID. So that's all for this video. It's been a quick introduction to the data classes module in Python. There's many more things and more advanced things you can do with this. If you're interested in a follow up video or any other content, let me know in the comments. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.